Hey guys, it's Brainbean here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Razer Black Widow Chroma Stealth Edition. Hey guys, so thanks for joining me once again. Today we're taking a look at Razer's flagship keyboard, the Black Widow Chroma. Specifically, the Stealth Edition, which is the same thing as the original Black Widow Chroma, just with the Razer Orange switch instead of the Razer Green. So this review can apply to both versions of the keyboard, but just keep in mind when I talk about this switch, I'll be talking about the Razer Orange switch instead of the Razer Green. Now the Razer Black Widow Chroma is a 16.8 million color RGB backlit mechanical keyboard and it comes with a whole variety of preset lighting options thanks to Razer's Synapse 2.0 software. You can also configure your own lighting options in the software as well as the ability to have the keyboard change colors when you boot up a certain game. The lighting on this keyboard is accentuated thanks to the white backplate that you'll find mounted behind the switches. And this really helps to reflect the light back up through the keyboard and you'll also notice the light kind of making a box effect around the keycaps themselves and that's thanks to the white backplate reflecting all of that light back off of it up at the user. The keycaps on the Black Widow Chroma are Razer's signature blocky font so you'll get that more stylized look with this keyboard. One gripe I share with this keyboard that I share with a lot of Cherry MX compatible keyboards is that all of the secondary functions are not illuminated on this keyboard, it's about half. And the reason for that is mainly due to the positioning of where the switch meets the keycap and it occludes that area where you would have the light shine through to illuminate it. Now some manufacturers choose to change the placement of the secondary function so that it can still light up with the rest of the keyboard and it's something I would have really liked to see on the Black Widow Chroma. One of the nice things about this keyboard is that it does come with a healthy variety of bells and whistles. One of the nice things it has is a USB pass-through, so you can plug your mouse directly into the keyboard and it's located conveniently on the right side of the board. Another nice thing is that it has an audio pass-through for both microphone and for your headphone jack, so you can also plug your headset directly into the keyboard as well. This helps minimize the amount of time you spend reaching around your desk to plug in different peripherals, and it's really nice to be able to just plug and play and swap out different things, whether you use a USB stick there, plug your headset in, or your mouse, it's just really convenient. One of the great things about this keyboard is it comes with five dedicated macro keys that are completely programmable and you can do that in Razer Synapse software. Now the great thing about this is that you can bind these keys to any combination of key presses or commands that will give you more of an edge in the game. I use these quite a bit, especially when playing games like World of Warcraft or other MMOs, and I find that when I switch to another keyboard for a while, I really miss having the macro keys. So if you're someone that plays these kind of games, or you think you'll really benefit from the macro keys, this is a huge plus for you. Now on the underside of this keyboard, you'll find four rubber pads that stop the keyboard from sliding around the desk, as well as two rubberized legs that will prevent it from slipping when you raise the angle of the keyboard. This keyboard comes with a nice thick braided cable, as well as two gold-plated USB connectors, one for the keyboard and one for the USB pass-through, and two gold-plated audio connectors, one for the headphone jack and one for the mic jack. One thing this keyboard doesn't have that I really wish it did was dedicated media keys, and when you consider that their biggest competitor, the K70, has these dedicated media keys, it's something that I would really like to see them add in the future. Now you do still have multimedia keys by way of the function key, as well as the ability to enable a Windows lock mode for gaming. Another gripe that I have with this keyboard is that where the caps lock, scroll lock, and num lock indicators are, those LEDs are housed underneath the plastic top cover and they show up looking really dim and it looks kind of cheap and clunky and I don't understand why they don't just have a simple clear LED indicator there. Now this keyboard is the Razer Black Widow Chroma Stealth Edition which means that it has Razer's orange switch in it. Now the big difference between the Razer orange switch and the Razer green is that the green is the clicky tactile version and the orange is still a tactile but it lacks the click. So you could compare this to the Cherry MX Blue versus the Cherry MX Brown. Now the difference between the Razer Orange Switch and the Cherry MX Brown is that the Razer Orange Switch has a slightly shorter actuation distance as well as a shorter reset point. Now theoretically this means that you should be able to achieve faster double taps with the Razer Orange Switch. Now unless you're playing incredibly competitive and really fast, you probably won't even notice the difference. Both switches have an actuation force of 45 grams, and if you'd like to know the other subtle differences between the two switches, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my entire video on the difference between the Razer Orange and the Cherry MX Brown. 
Here's a quick sound test of the Razer Orange Switch and the Razer Black Widow Chroma. Overall, I think the Razer Black Widow Chroma is an absolutely fantastic gaming keyboard. The RGB lights on this thing look absolutely fantastic, and they look really nice when coming off of that white backplate. When you couple all this with Razer Synapse 2.0 software, you really have a recipe for great lighting. And the Razer Switch has undergone a large improvement since they switched from Kale as the manufacturer to Greetech. If you haven't checked out a newer 2016 model Razer keyboard, I highly recommend you check out the new Switch because the difference is absolutely night and day. Yeah, the old Kale Switch was really crappy, but the newer Greetech Switches are absolutely phenomenal. And the Razer Orange Switch on this stealth keyboard is absolutely awesome. It's actually my new favorite switch over the Cherry MX Brown, and if you want to know more about why that is, check out the link in the description again for my comparison between the Razer Orange and the Cherry MX Brown. You also get a lot of really great things with this keyboard, like the USB pass-through, the audio patch-through bays, as well as the macro keys. All of this rounds out to make a really nice keyboard. Of course, I do have some minor gripes with this keyboard, like I said. I would really like to see better LED indicators there, where you would have your caps lock and scroll lock LEDs, as well as having all the secondary functions illuminated on this keyboard. I think anytime you have fantastic RGB lighting, you really should have all the characters on your keys illuminated. Now, of course, this is easily changed by getting a really nice set of keycaps from somebody like Max Keyboard, and that's something that you can easily do. However, those are gonna be pretty expensive, cost you about 80 bucks to get a nice set. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Give it a like if you enjoyed it, show your support, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the quality content I have coming your way soon. You can also follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming, and if you'd like to support the channel even more, you can find my Amazon affiliate link located down in the description below. All the proceeds of that account go directly towards getting new products to review for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.